Hey, robot makers, hope you're having a good day so far. So do you want to visualize your LiDAR data using ROS2 and <laughs> this is quite specific and Arviz2 and don't know where to start or having some problems with it? Then this is the show for you. So um, my name is Kevin. Come with me as we build robots, bring them to life with code and have a whole load of fun along the way. OK, so this is part four of the Learn ROS with me series. OK, let's get over to it. So yes, we're going to be looking at LiDAR today and uh, how to visualize this with uh, this tool that's called Arviz2. So the session goals for today, we're going to have a look at Docker and X11 forwarding, which again sounds quite specific. This is probably a medium to expert level show, I would say today. Uh, probably not one for the beginners, probably more medium than I would say experts. We're going to have a look at what Arviz2 is, what it is, how to use it. We're going to have a look at some ROS visualization using some transforms and Arviz2. Again, we'll cover all this, so don't worry if these terms are all like, what is he talking about? Uh, we're going to get into all the details of this. I'm going to have a bit of a demo as well, bringing up Arviz and displaying some LiDAR data live in the studio hoping this all works because it's quite a complicated thing so stick around I shouldn't drop anything today either because it's like a hands-off kind of episode today I'm not actually showing any stuff so uh, docker and x11 what on earth is all these uh, very esoteric naming things all about so we've looked at docker um, in the very first show we were looking at first or second show we were looking at how to use docker uh, to create containers which are like little um, bespoke made um, uh, software containers <laughs> software environments which means that we can build them we can tear them down we can reconstruct them again all with code very very simple to do and it means we can reliably do this too so our docker container that we built in the very second episode doesn't have um x11 installed so x11 is a thing that gives your your computer if you're on a unix platform probably um the user in, the user interface so i think the early the early max had this um i say early max the the sort of next step computers had something similar to this, uh, but certainly Unix computers, if you've used like a Sun Microsystems um, a Spark computer that had X windows on it. Um, so we're going to have a look at what this is and how to make it work in our containers. So what we can do, rather than having to install that entire X windows um, subsystem in our container, because it's quite bloaty to do that, we can actually just redirect all those calls outside of the container into our host environment, which is our Raspberry Pi OS, and that already has X11 in installed on it so we can very simply redirect our graphics calls outside of the container with basically like three commands this took me about a week to figure out because I, I didn't understand why this didn't work so I figured this out for you so what is x11 what is all this about so this was developed by MIT in the 1980s and it's a graphical interface um, protocol if you like for networked computers so typically back in the day back in the 1980s if you was at a university they would have a very expensive mainframe computer somewhere in the bowels of their maths or computing departments and what you would have in the libraries and the little computer labs is terminals so these are essentially a screen a keyboard a mouse um, and a little box but that box isn't like a, a beefy computer this is like a really lightweight um, terminal so this would receive all the graphics um, from for your session using the x11 protocol and you would send it keyboard commands and mouse movements back to that mainframe it would process it and then send results back in real time really quickly so that's what they developed they call it the um, the network protocol the x windows system uh, and it can communicate it's the whole server and client architecture so the server would be this you know archaic uh, mainframe computer or mini computer in the bowels of a the university somewhere and the client would be the little box that you would have on on your desk or built probably built into the terminal itself so the server is responsible for managing the user interface um, that does all the the calculations the graphics um, uh, positioning the layout all that kind of stuff and then the client is just responsible for displaying that on the user interface on the on the, the screen that you're in front of so there's a client and there's a server part and this is essentially how we we split up uh, in our docker container that's that's got the x11 um, server inside if you like and then the client which is our raspberry pi os is just going to display those graphics for us so the x11 protocol is used to send commands from the client sorry from the server to the client which are then interpreted by the client and uh, generate the output on your screen and it says it's used by popular operating systems such as linux mac os 10 
probably not so much nowadays you actually have to install quartz x which is like a an x windows subsystem if you actually want to use it on mac os and windows as well you can get um x windows um for windows windows <laughs> microsoft windows so let's have a look at how we go about redirecting the x host um on our raspberry pi session so let me get over to our our raspberry pi um, which is just here so this is the actual one on my desk this is running um, on this little um, qb robot just here so uh, let's let's get to it so all we need to do actually now this i was looking into this and there's i think they said there's four different ways of doing this and i'm going to show you the sort of quick hacky way it's probably not as secure as other methods that you can do but if you if you just want to get to the results this is how you can do it so you type x host local and then root colon and root like this and what it will say is non-network local connections being added to access control lists and what that means is the magic will happen don't worry about it so then the only thing we then need to do is we need to edit our docker compose file to to change a couple of settings in there so let's go over to our visual studio code and what i've got over here um, I've created a new Docker container that I'm calling Docker Full. We can still use the existing one, but this one is essentially the same. And I've added an extra line or two to this file. So the Docker Compose file, we use that to, to bring up our container. So we can cr create the image, which is the, uh, the Docker container, but not actually running. It's kind of like the instructions, a blueprint. And then the um, when we do a Docker Compose up, uh, what that will do is I like, create an actual container that's running so it will then look at all these different configuration settings and apply them so the first thing it's going to do it's going to create a service that's called ROS2 uh, it's going to check if it's already built if it isn't built it will tell docker to build the um, the docker file which is this docker file here we'll have a look at that in a second as well if we wanted a quick reminder and then this network host uh, mode network mode host means normally in a docker container it doesn't know anything about networking and you have to punch holes through the container it's almost like poking holes through the side of the containers wall um, specific port numbers so that it can communicate with the outside world but normally they're quite isolated and that's actually part of one of the the reasons you'd use a container in this case we're kind of saying forget that just leave all the walls open um, and use the hosts networking uh, capabilities so Again, this is a bit hacky it means that we're not specifying exactly which ports we need to open uh, but if you want to if you want hell basically try and figure out which ports are being used by ros and all the different software stack um, it's quite complicated so this just opens things up we've also got this ipc host um, again ipc stands for inter process communication and it's just a way different parts of software can communicate with each other um, so we've not we looked at the volumes in the in the sort of second episode I think it was um, and these are just a way of mounting within your container folders outside of the container. The devices one is how we actually communicate with our lidar so that appears on uh, slash dev slash tty usb zero. Um, so we just map those two there. Tty true is a way that we can get a terminal. And uh, this is the last bit that's related to the X host bit. So environment dash display means forward all the X11 stuff through to the, the host environment. So that means that we can actually run things, uh, use X11. So let's try that. Let's go back and we'll come back to, oh, let's, let's just quickly have a quick look at the Docker file just before we do the other bit. So this is essentially the instructions on how to build our container. So we're using, um, uh, we're using ROS Humble ROS Core Jammy. The core bit means only install the, the most core parts of ROS, so don't install all the desktop environment, which includes like ROS, um, sorry, which includes um, all the windowing system, Avis 2, and, and so on. So by just saying core, we keep it quite small, but then we have to just forward the Avis 2 stuff, which is what we're going to do in a second. Um, the next bit basically just installs a whole bunch of Python dependencies for the container. Um, we then run this rosdep, which is like the ros dependency management system that will just pull in everything. It will then um, run this colcom, which is the collaborative um, construction environment. Um, it basically just pulls down a couple of different repositories there. And then what it then does is it updates and upgrades the environment. If you don't do this, it can't um, take on board all those extra repository um 
repository settings and repositories are when you when you do like um, an update or you want to install some software it needs to know where to grab that from and the, the default libraries for, for Ubuntu don't know anything about raw so we essentially have to add them in and that's what this these settings here do um, we then install um, the ROS Humble Navigation 2 and ROS Humble Nav 2 bring up, which are some extra bits we'll look at in a future episode, uh, but they essentially help us with the um, simultaneous location and mapping the SLAM stuff. Um, and what else do we do? I've just also installed Nano, which is their little text editing tool, because I prefer to use that. And we've also said um, echo source opt ROS Humble setup.bash into root bash and essentially what that does is means that we don't have to keep typing that setting for some reason on the demo i'm going to show you now it seems to have forgotten about that but don't worry so that's that's our docker file so what we're going to do now we're going to go back over to our raspberry pi um, which i'm uh, i'm just using vnc by the way to connect to this if you're wondering how i can do that and what we're going to do now is we're going to um so the docker container if i do docker ps we can see our docker full ros2 container is running uh, that's the actual name of it there, docker-full underscore ros2 underscore one. So last week we were looking at how we can execute things in our in our environment. So we do docker, exec, and then dash it, which is that interactive terminal. And then the name of the container, which is docker-full underscore ros2 underscore one. And then bash, which is our, our shell command. So we're in it now. We just need to... I'm just going to type ROS2 to see it. No, it, it hasn't f remembered to do the sourcing bit. So I just need to do that, which is a setup.bash. And what I can now do is do um, RQT. RQT is a graphical tool. So it's going to run in the container, but the graphics are going to be drawn outside the container in our host environment. So this is now running from the container. And you can see there, um, it's got all these messages. Don't worry about them. It's actually working. So we can, for example, have a look at uh, the node graph. So currently, um, if I say all nodes, and I think I switch off debug, we can see there we've just got the, the main node working, which is the RQT GUI Pi node, which is this thing here. So what I could do, for example, um, what would be a good example of an extra... We'll, we'll come back to that in a minute. We, we can have a look at the node tree later on, if I remember. Uh, but essentially, we've now got things that use X11 running from our container and then being seen outside a container in our Raspberry Pi environment, which is exactly what I was shooting for. OK, let's get back to our keynote. And we're going to have a look at what RViz2 is. So RViz2 is a powerful, user-friendly visualization tool that allows you to explore and analyze your data in 3D. It's a really, really cool piece of software. So you can bring things in like robots, cameras, geometry, uh, point clouds, which is essentially what our LiDAR data is going to be, and so much more. One of the things I also want to do is bring in a model of my robot that I've created in Fusion 360 as an object in into ROS, into the gazebo tool and also into Arvis 2 so we can see it sort of moving around and scan its environment and mapping and so on. Um, so Arvis 2 is an open source tool. It's available for free and is compatible with the robot operating system. And uh, in ROS 2 we use Arvis 2. That's what that extra 2 is on the end. So Arvis 2, this visualization tool, comes with the ROS desktop package, not in the core or base, but it does display. So it's got three um, panes if you like to the application we have this pane that's got the red thing around it here this is the uh, the display section so you can see all the different nodes that are in there then we have this camera view we can move around the uh, the world using a camera and then on the right hand side there we can adjust which camera you know is it a top down one is it sort of an off orbiting view and so on so we can adjust that there and you'll also see when we're, we're running it this is ROS time um, which is like always ticking by and it just keeps everything in sync because things can be running on completely different computers okay so that's um, the the sort of overview of ROS what it looks like um, so we're going to be using an RP LiDAR today um, to, to do our laser scanning. Uh, this is the one I've chosen to use. It was essentially the cheapest one on the market at the time. So this is by Slamtech. It's called the RP LiDAR A1. Um, it rotates between 5 and 10 hertz, depending on which setting you give it. It has about an 8 meter range, which is pretty good. Uh, and it takes between 2,000 and 4,000 samples per second. It costs under £90. I think it was about 88 
it may have gone up in price now and they might not even supply that one anymore but um it's it's quite cheap and it, it it works good enough for what we need and it connects um by uart or usb so i've actually got this uh on the front of the robot connected uh, via usb cable so that's what we'll be using today so we need to download the software and then compile it so i'm going to show you how we do that today so let me get back over to our raspberry pi and we will need to be inside our environment as well um so what i'll do i wonder if we can zoom in on that at all there's a zoom in function there let's try that let's try that again and then let's try that one more time just so you can see what's actually going on here right so i'm going to go into the ros uh, into the home folder i'm just going to do this just to show you how this works um, and i'm going to create a new folder let's just call this a uh, live show and let's go into the live show and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do git clone and then I'm going to clone the repository which is on github and it's by bab baba baba khan oops two extra k's there and then the actual repository is called rp lidar ros2 so oops and that means I've typed it wrong let me just check that baba khan baba khani with an i on the end Nope, that's not right. Uh, RP, RP LiDAR ROS2. So let me just check I've got everything right there. GitHub.com. Baba. Oh, I've got a J there. There shouldn't be a J in there. So it's Baba. I'm saying Baba and I'm not typing Baba. There we go. Right. And it shouldn't take long for it to do that because it's really, really small. Okay, so we've now got a new folder that's called RP lidar ros2 if we go into there and have a look around uh, and what i'm also going to do is when we get these um uh there's not actually an install folder in here when we get things like this we need to compile it we can see there's a source folder there and we use the colcon build which we looked at when we were creating our own programs if you remember so this takes about two minutes for it to to compile um, sometimes it will end and say that it hasn't compiled properly. If you run it a second time, the same command there, Colcon build, it seems to complete, so not sure what's going on there. Okay, so I'm not going to let you wait for a minute while it does that. We have already built it. So if I just uh, come out this folder and, oops, I exited the entire thing then. Let's go back into, exited the session then, so I just need to do that setup.bash again this just makes all the environment variables work and if we now go into ros2 and into rp lidar ros2 this is essentially what it builds it just builds some extra things so there's a build folder an install folder a, a log folder and a launch i think the launch was probably already there so so what we then need to do when we build something using colcon we need to do set uh, we need to do source and then install and then setup.bash and again, that will bring in all those new things that have been built into this particular package. So if we do ROS2 um, and then we do um, package list, and if we just pipe that into grep, this basically just says only show me things that, that I've got the word RP, RPL in there. And it should find RP LIDAR underscore ROS, which is this package. So we can now use that um to do to do stuff so we can we can use this to run our li lidar package so if we do ros2 and then we do run and then we type rpl and i press tab it will auto fill in that name of the package and if i just do rpl and then tab again it will then fill out the name so that's the package and this is the actual program within that package that we can run so if i do this this is rp lidar running on ros2 and you can see there the firmware is 1.29, hardware revision 7, blah, blah. And what it's actually doing now is it's spitting out loads of data. So we can actually go and have a look at this in another session. Again, if I uh, zoom in on that a little bit, you can probably see it a bit easier. So let me just zoom in. So it says shift, control, and plus, shift, control, and plus. There we go. So if I do that, and if I do, um, let's just do that source thing again. And if I do ROS2 topic list, we should now see three topics or well, four topics in fact. So slash scan is coming from our um, our LIDAR. So that means that this is actually spitting out data 
on a topic. And we looked at topics last week when we were doing writing our own little programs. And um, oops, on the wrong screen there. And what we then need to do, we can we could actually echo out. So topic echo slash scan. Let's see what see what the data looks like. And we'll just get loads of numbers, 47 and all this kind of stuff. What you can't see there is there's loads of data being sent. You, you're just kind of getting the tail end of that. Um, so that means that that's working. We're, we're getting data from our, our LiDAR, but we can't see it. We can't visualize it. And that's what we need RVIS2 for. Um, so let's go back to, uh, to here. So we've downloaded, we've compiled the software, we've then we've sourced the environment that's got the software in it, and then we've run the package within it. So the next thing we need to know about is transforms. So transforms are something that we need to do in any kind of 3D environment, whether it's a computer game or whether it's um, you know visualizing robots. So transformations translate local coordinates to real world coordinates. And we're gonna look at this from a two dimensional perspective, but you usually do this from a three dimensional perspective as well. So if we think about our robot, um, we can talk about things on our robot um, from the point of origin of where the robot's origin point is. So we can say the LiDAR is like 143 millimeters high and you know 12 millimeters across for example from the very origin point which might be the very bottom left point of the robot. So that's our local coordinates. Our real world coordinates are completely different. It's where we place our robot in the real world we'll say that there's a, an origin point now think about the real world um, that we live in. We also have an origin point and that's Greenwich Mean Time. So when we're talking about time zones, for example, the origin point is Greenwich in London, uh, not too far from the uh, the O2 Arena, I believe, just across the, uh, the grass from there. Um, so real world coordinates is just a way of saying, where is this robot in our environment? Um, and we need to be able to translate when we're talking about the data coming from the LiDAR, um, translate that in terms of well, where's that on the robot and where's the robot in relation to our real world coordinates. So the transform is that calculation between those points. Now it isn't just X and Y, it's X and Y and Z. And the other thing is there's a really cool thing you can do with um, transforms if you're a programmer. You can use matrices which is like this maths concept and you can rotate, you can scale and you can um, transform so you can you can rotate the robot round in any orientation. You can scale it. You can make it larger or smaller. And then you can also say with the offset from the origin point, the translation. You can do all those three things in one operation, which is really cool. Uh, when I did some 3D games stuff a long time ago, and I think it was based on uh, Doom, the game, uh, they showed you how to do those um, matrices calculations because it's really quick uh, and you do it in one operation. It's conceptually a bit tricky to get your head around, but... Um, once you've written the code, you can forget about that, it works. So here we go, here's some of the transforms that we would need to do um, to basically tell our ROS environment where is this LiDAR, because it's on top of our robot, otherwise it'll think that the LiDAR is on the very bottom of the floor and all the data that's coming out um, represents the very bottom of the world rather than it being 146.64 millimeters high and 23.62 from the edge and so on. So th these are relative um, relative um, coordinates in our local origin space, our local coordinate space, um, and we need to transform that into real world coordinates. So this is something if we wanted to bring our robot in as a model, we would have to tell uh, Ros all these things as well. So if you enjoy these videos, I know it's a bit heavy today, this one on uh, detail, uh, please give this video a like, drop me a comment, let me know if you're doing ROS as well, if you're learning ROS and uh, where you're up to and what kind of robots you're going to be building it with. And if you've not already subscribed, definitely hit that bell and uh, click the notify button, otherwise you'll miss out on all these, uh, these good tutorials. And I go live every single Sunday at 7 o'clock GMT. Um, so if you want to catch me live, you want to hang out and chat after the show has finished, then that's what you want to do. You want to hang out with me seven o'clock on Sunday. OK, so creating translations, we're going to we're going to create a translation from the laser frame to the world frames. This is something that we need to do if we want to get our laser data uh, so that it can be represented inside Rol inside uh, Arvis 2. Right. So let's get back over to um, let me see our our Raspberry Pi environment. So let's go over here 
and what we need to do we need to create so we've got in one session over here we've got our lidar node spitting out all that data and what we now need to do is we now need to create a transform so let me see where we are in this in the world so let's go into ros2 let's go into the rp lidar and let's do that source which is the install slash setup and what this will do is that compiled ros uh, rp lidar library it now knows about um, things that that can do so if we do ros2 we can now do tf2 underscore ros which is a, a package for doing transforms and we now need to do a um, a static transform so let me see if i press i need to type run so ros2 run ros tf2 underscore ros and then static transform just pressing tab and it will auto fill the rest and then what we then need to do is tell it the um, the actual translations we want to do. So from and to, and essentially we just cheat. We just say it's just zero for everything. And then we need to say what it's translating from and to. So it's translating from the laser frame. And it's going to the world frame. So there we go. So this is now translating and it says it's going to spin until the tran um, and publish the transform until it's stopped. Um, so that's how we do a transform. It's as simple as that. So what we would do if we wanted to put in, um, you know, where the LiDAR is in relation to the floor and so on, we would change these uh, these values here. Uh, so we're not going to do that today in the show. We just wanted to create a transform, essentially. So it's as simple as that. Now, if we launch another window, and we also launch... Um, now let me just zoom in a little bit on this, like so. And we once again do source yeah, and then opt and then setup.bash <clears throat> and we now do um, ros2 topic list we can now see how many um, topics are are showing so we've now got this uh, tf static which is the name of the the transform that we created okay so that's um, what we needed to do to create the transform to the laser frame to the world and laser frame to the world that we've uh, we've done that laser time so is this the part the uh, let me just see what else i had on there i can't remember if this is a yes this is this is the actual piece where we can bring all that data using our our viz2 so let's do our viz2 our viz2 and we can bring that in and start playing with our our laser data we can visualize it so we've got all the pieces we need now so if i just maximize that so you can see there we have um, a button down here which is add so if i add in and i scroll down here we'll find one that's called laser scan we can click ok on that so that's going to bring in this uh, display type now at the moment it's got this little red thing and it says oh error and the error is that it doesn't know what the the topic is so if i just open that up there it will say error subscribing to the topic so what we need to do here is just click in this little thing and we've got a, a topic that's called scan and currently we can't see anything on our screen it's not it's not displaying on here because we need to change the fixed frame from map to world which is the translation the transform that we created and i can see there there's some little dots and things so let's go down to our laser scan let's change it from flat squares to points and let's see what's going on here now sometimes i've seen it do this where the data looks a, a bit spherical it looks like it's spinning around and not calculating it properly um, so what i found in these cases is if we just stop each of these um, and, and restart them um, for some reason it it seems to work so i'm not sure why that is so let's just go back on that one stop that restart it and then let's go back to Aves and quickly just add back in that uh, laser frame as well. So let's go there. Let's change that to world. And let's change that laser scan there to the topic to scan. And I can't hear it spinning around at the moment. So let's just go and troubleshoot that. That's fine. That's fine. This one has had an error. Oops. So let's try that. There we go can hear it spinning and there's the data coming in let's just change that back to points and what I'll do I'll move this uh, box that's at the side of it and see now sometimes it does settle down I'm not sure why it has a problem every now and again but um, 
uh, what we might have to do is just wait for that to settle. This might just be that it's catching slightly on the uh, uh, the motors catching slightly, so it shouldn't be showing like a circular thing. It should be look. It should look quite quite square. So let me just put it there. Move this box out the way, and we'll just see if this settles down. And if not, what I can do is just stop them again. Let me just stop that and restart it. So I'm just stopping the LiDAR, RP LiDAR uh, node, and then restarting it again. And let's see, that's looking a bit better, but um, it's not looking very stable to me that. I can see that there's an edge here. Uh, so if I zoom in a little bit on this, so I'm using, um, yeah, you can see all those sort of circular things. That, that doesn't look right to me. So let me just give this a bit of a nudge and let's just check the transforms as well so let's just stop that and let's just check so one two three four five six laser frame to world that looks correct to me and let's check and see if we can get a better view on here of what we're after So I can see that the data is coming in. It just doesn't look great to me. That this, and I did see this when I was uh, running through the thing just before the show as well. Uh, I have had this running for quite some time, so sometimes that caused that to happen. Uh, let's see what else we can do there. Let's just bring everything down once again. So one of the other things I can mention here, this is probably a good time to do this. We have to run all these three separate um, sessions, and it gets a bit messy. You've got three terminals, four terminals at a time there. Um, we can actually package all these different things that we have to launch one at a time into a launch file. So if I go into our launch folder, oops, if I type that correct, launch folder, and we look in here, have I got, yeah, so this LIDAR underscore launch.xml, let's just have a look what's in there. So LIDAR underscore launch.xml. You can see there we've got two nodes listed. We have the static transform, which is essentially what we type out on the terminal. And we've also got this RP LIDAR ROS and then the RP com um, compositor composition. Um, so what we can do, instead of just running those on separate windows, we can just say ROS2 uh, launch instead of run. And if we do RP LIDAR, because this is the package we want, and then we do um, the the X, uh, the YAML file, so that should be, um, let me find that again, so LiDAR launch, so if I just type in LI LiDAR launch, I'll press OK, uh, LiDAR not found, package LiDAR not found, ROS2, so did I do, did I do the source thing, let me just check. So install slash um, setup.bash. I'm sure I did do that. And let's try that again. Uh, and it's because it's uh, it's not the LiDAR package, it's the LiDAR underscore ROS2, I think. So let's try that. And then press tab tab again. I do tab tab there. Ah, uh, there we go. And then I do LiDAR, LiDAR launch. No, it's not happy with that. And it's probably because of something that I put into the file where it's in malformed name and so on. It's because it's because I'd fiddled with this before the show. So if I go back to Visual Studio, so I've, I'm connected to to this um, this robot using Visual Studio. I'm using this SSH and um, Visual Studio. We looked at that in the, the other episode. And this means we can edit things on here. Um, without having to be inside because it's much easier to edit things in here. So if we find that launch folder which is there and that LiDAR launch, um, I think I actually got rid of some of the things in here. Is the namespace I think. Is it namespace and then LiDAR something like that. I think that's what it was called namespace LiDAR again save that I think we do have to compile that as well if we've changed it. So let's check where we are. If we do Colcon build, let's see if that does the trick. Okay, and then if I do um, source install setup.bash, and then let's try ROS2 launch. Press OK. 
press tab to do that and then RP press tab Let's see that and then lidar tab tab to fill that is that gonna work no it's not happy with that I don't know what's what's going on there but essentially that's what we need to do is create a lot um, a launch file you can create that in a number of different ways you can create a YAML file an XML file a Python file or a C++ program to do essentially the same thing but we'll have to do this just old school which is fine so let's let's restart the um, the transform but let's let's start the lidar first um, so that's that one uh, let me see let's this window here is gonna be our uh, LiDAR one so instead of doing launch let's just do run so let's change that to there and then let's just do the RP LiDAR comp composition so I've just heard the LiDAR spin so that's uh, that's spinning now on our on our desk like so uh, yeah I was just worried that it might be ever so slightly catching on the edge there and the, uh, the the little motor inside there is on like a there's like a rubber band just there as well, so hopefully that's uh, going to run fine there. Let's go back to to here. So that's running okay. We need to then go to do our transform, which I think was this window here, and then on this other window we just need to do um, Arvis two. So let's try that one more time. And this is the thing with ROS; it can be a bit fiddly. Uh, there's a lot of different stacks of technology. Think about what we had to do with uh, the Docker. Um, X host stuff at the beginning of the show and let's just add in that laser frame and let's go for that and let's change the map to world let's change the laser scan to be scan and let's see if our data comes in any better this time mm, not 100% sure yet so there are a couple of other different styles on here as well we've got uh, we've got points which I think I prefer let's just put that on points and um, yeah that's still looking a bit funky to me that really what we should see is a square room because it's a pretty I think it's three by four meters this room um, is that any better not really I don't, I don't know if it's because it's doing a lot of work I don't think it is doing a lot of work to be fair this is all just running on the Raspberry Pi um, it, I think it does settle down after a while when I've looked at this sometimes and have had it running for a Number of days and it, and it seemed to be okay so essentially the room the corner of the room is just over here so just over here somebody's saying give it a power cycle we could try that we can definitely do that we'll do that in a second you can see there in between the other bits that corner there and then I'm over here but you, if this was static, you'd be able to see me waving my hand there because I would show up as a, a little moving red line. I like the idea that Wayne said there just to, to power cycle the whole thing. So I think we're going to do that in a second. Um, and then the other things we can have, so we can have squares. So if I just zoom in, uh, the squares are really, really small. So you can actually increase the size of these to like four, five. Oops, let's not do that. Let's do... Let's do eight or something like that. You can see there the actual, if I zoom in, these are actually little squares. You can have cubes. You can have tiles. You can have um, little spheres. So they actually look like little balls. If I zoom out there and then the one I prefer is just points. Now at the moment this is just like a point cloud this isn't joining up and forming a map so to get the map stack up and running is quite complicated so we'll, we will definitely have a look at that in the, in the future uh, but there's quite a lot of extra bits of software we need to do to get that working um, so that is the um, the Arvis 2 I am going to do a reboot on this one just to see if that if that actually helps so we can uh, we can basically just give this a, a restart it doesn't take long to to bring everything up but if we do that We've got a nice clean start and maybe things will work okay okay so while that's doing that let's have a look what else we have on here so if you've not joined me on discord um you're missing out on the conversation there we've got a great group of people um who can certainly help out and i get asked all the time on every platform whether it's facebook messenger or whether it's uh, instagram instant messages um, whether it's tiktok or whether it's um what else have we got on there? Twitter, Mastodon. People directly message me individually and ask for you know, help on a particular question. I'm only one person. There's only so many hours in the day. If you go over to Discord, there's hundreds of people on there 
they probably know more than I do about specific things. So if you join our Discord, go to kezrobots.com slash Discord, get the, the sign-up link for that. Um, you'll then be able to join us in there and get your problems sorted and help other people too. The other thing I've been creating uh, quite busily, uh, I've created a really easy way to to make these articles and have them look quite professional on the kevsrobot.com website is these how it works articles so we're looking at things like how does mems work how does slam work how do motor encoders work um, so if you go over to um, kezrobots.com slash resources you can have a poke around on there and see all the uh, the latest articles that are, are uh, that i've created and um, if you've not followed me on social media, um, help me out. Help me grow on social media. I love social media. I love posting on all the different platforms. And they're all different. They're all unique. So um, TikTok, I'm Kevin Maclea 6 uh, and I occasionally do videos on there. Um, TikTok's quite specific in how it likes its videos to be edited and so on. So um, they're not always great for the kind of content I do. But uh, I do like to do videos on there too. Then there is uh, Instagram, so I'm at Kevin McAleer on Instagram. I'm at Kev's Mac on uh, Twitter. And also on Mastodon, I'm Kev's Mac at Mastodon Social as well. So follow me on all the places and you'll help me grow my social media profile. And if you want to support the show, and quite a few people have done, so thank you so much to the people that have supported the show. We'll have a look at um, those names in, in a minute. You can do a super thanks if you're watching this on replay. So if you're watching after the live stream has ended, uh, you can hit the... Um, the super thanks button and that's a bit like buying a coffee really if you're watching on the live stream you can do a super chat you can do that um, now i shall switch on the button that makes that uh, all show on the screen there we go um and again this is about a bit like buying a coffee and if you want to buy an actual physical coffee for me you can go over to kezrobots.com slash coffee and um you can you can buy me a coffee there if you want to support the show um, by using the youtube platform you can go to the uh, the join button so i think after you've clicked subscribe you then get the join button in its place and for a monthly like price of a coffee you can support the show that way too and that helps pay for all these expensive lidars and so on and we have got some supporters so i wanted to sort of call out these supporters um so here we go so we have um support of the show we have justine lutz we've got roland uh, we've got um zugali Zugaldia, is that? We have Bill P, we've got Mark, we've got David, Shroomy, Derek, RGS, um, we have uh, Roland again and Bill um, as well. And members, we have um, we have got Thomas, um, Shemi and Steve Phillips. I'm wondering if this is right. I'm, I think there is another person that joined and I think their name might be missing off that list. I'm going to check in a second. Um, and then YouTube members, we have a whole bunch of YouTube members. So we've got uh, Sadiq, we've got Jeff, we've got WP Body, we've got Fred, we've got Bill, we've got Dale, Hans from Cheerlights, we've got Michael, Jose, Johan, John Paul and Tom, of course. So I'm just going to check. Um, so what I have to do, I have to create this as a movie file by extracting three CSV files, one from YouTube and then two from buymeacoffee.com. And I think um, maybe, I'm, maybe I'm mistaken there. I think it's the YouTube one. So that's correct. Yeah, and then I have to basically put them into this uh, and export as a movie. So I'm sure I did do that before the show. Yeah. Cool, cool. So if we go back over to our our keynote there, and we're going to have a quick look and see. Um, so we just did that. Yeah, so that's the end of our slides. So let me have a look and see how we're getting on with our Raspberry Pi now. So that should have uh, booted back up, which it has. Let's uh, quickly see what the state of our docker container is so currently the docker container isn't running so what we need to do is we need to go into our qb1 folder into our docker full folder and then we can do docker compose up uh, up dash d which will bring the container up it doesn't usually take too long to do that there we go so if we now do docker ps we can see that that's running and if we now just um, open up using that command there we are now in our environment. So let me just see if it's remembered. No, it's not remembered that yet. So let's do source um, opt humble setup dot bash. Let's now go into our ROS2 folder. Oops, it's ROS2 and into our RP LiDAR folder. And then let's do um, source install slash slash setup dot bash and let's create uh, and then we can then do ros2 run we can run our rp lidar package 
and the RP composition. We can then create another window. Let's open up another Docker session in there. So this, this is all within the same Docker container. We're just creating new um, like terminal sessions. So let's do source opt setup dot bash. Let's go into um, ROS2 and RP LiDAR ROS2. Let's then do, um, let's do, so Dale's saying there's a lot of computation and, and the Python may not be up to the task. So if we do um, top, we can see what's running and how much RAM that's taking up. We can also do that in um, over here. If we just do like H top and have that running down there, you can keep an eye on the, uh, you know, how well that's actually running. So let's, let's do what we need to do next, which is the transformation. So um, did we do, um, let's just do the um, source for this one again. So this is install slash setup dot bash. And then we need to do ROS2 run TF2 underscore ROS. And then we need to do static transform. And then 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And then a laser frame to world. And that's running. Then we need to open another one, which is going to run half is two. So let's do that. Source. And we need to do opt setup.bash avis2. Okay. Oop, what did I do wrong there? Uh, da, 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 da. Avis2. Oh, that's interesting. So this particular Docker container doesn't think that it has got um, the display. So I think what we need to do is just do like export display equals that it that's weird that's weird so <sighs> what did I do wrong so I would I need to go back into the host environment and do X host um, local root and then let's try that again do I have to do I have to stop that Um, so ROS, let's go into ROS2, RP LiDAR, let's do source setup, install setup, dot bash, <laughs> let's try RVIS2 again on there, if this doesn't work I'm going to give up. So it's complaining about the application failed to start because the QT platform could not be initialized. That speaks to the fact that the container isn't right. So what I think I'll do, um, I'm going to go into that uh, QB1 folder. Uh, I'm going to have a look inside that Docker full. I'm going to go to git pull just to make sure there's any changes. No, we're all good there. I'm going to have a look at the Docker file itself to see that it's got that, um, that thing there. And then I'm going to basically just do a Docker build. Gonna get it to rebuild that uh, container. Uh, let's have a look. No, no, it's not that. It's it's to do with the the the, um, the container. So I've had this running. I've I basically torn down the container, rebuilt it, and it works fine. I think it was just um, the container that it's running in is probably not the right one because I have to keep typing in that um, source opt humble setup.bash and it should run that automatically and that tells me that it's not running the right container for some reason so so it's probably just a docker thing um i don't know how long it takes to build a container but i'm not probably not i'll make you wait all that time i'll give it another couple of seconds because i don't remember this taking a long time to build last time um, and then once that's up and running we can just start that again so what I will do, this is the point in the video, I think we need to, uh, we need to let the people who are watching this on replay, um, let them go and we can carry on looking at this uh, for people on the live stream audience. So what we've done today, just to recap, we've, uh, we've got our LiDAR up and running, which is just here. 